Hello, my name is Andrew, and for the past six years, I've been running, walking, and hiking in barefoot shoes. So for this video, what I'm gonna do is just talk about the ones that have been the most useful to me over the years. And um, we're gonna kind of rank this video by like, if you only had one pair, if you had two pair, if you had three pair, just to kind of simplify things. Cause especially when you're starting out, it can be really frustrating, like having all of these different options. And it's like, you know, I don't have unlimited money. <laughs> I just need a shoe that can do a lot of different things, you know, and then I can kind of expand from there. So that's the general idea for this video. And um, yeah, I've got a crap ton of shoes <laughs> to show you. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun, we're gonna hang out, and before we get into it, I'm just gonna talk over three different terms that I think will be helpful for everyone in just terms of understanding what we're talking about. Um, so for starters, what is a barefoot shoe? Simply, a barefoot shoe is something that's thin enough to feel and flexible enough to feel like being barefoot. So you've got some sensation, you've got a lot of flexibility, just like a human foot would be. Um, and then the other two things are that you would want a wide toe box, so lots of room for your toes to splay out and, and work properly. And you don't want this, you don't want the soccer cleat vibe. <laughs> um, and then the last thing is you want a barefoot shoe to be zero drop, which simply means that the back of the shoe and the front of the shoe are the same exact height. So it's not tip forward like you'll see a lot of standard shoes look like. So. With that said, I'm gonna go through um, 10 different categories of shoes, 10 different types, and we're gonna start off with like, if you only had one pair of shoes, like you're just starting out or you're on a budget, like what would you get? And for me, this shoe, the Saltich Vintero, is one of the most useful barefoot shoes that I've ever owned. Um, a few things that I like about it, it has a wide toe box, um, so it's gonna fit most foot shapes, maybe not extra wide, but we're gonna talk about that. Um, it has a leather upper and it is also insulated. So the benefit of this is like, if you're in a climate that has, you know, winter and summer and like a very different temperature range between those two, um, which a lot of people have, a boot like this is really versatile because it's got some insulation. It's actually waterproof, but it is thin enough so that you get some good breathability and you're not sweating like crazy in summer. I mean, obviously, you know, if you can have multiple pairs of shoes for winter and summer, it's gonna be ideal. But, you know, if you had to go with one, this would be a really good option. It's super lightweight, has a 3.5 millimeter sole, so very similar to being barefoot. Like, that's just crazy. You know, you can bend this thing in half diagonally, crossways, whatever you wanna do with it. Um, very comfortable shoe, extremely lightweight. Um, and then for each of these, I'm just gonna give you a few alternatives. So you're like, um, I don't like that, or it doesn't fit. Um, yeah, there'll be some other things to look at. So the same brand, Saltich, also makes um, a shoe called the Outdoor, which looks like this. Um, and it has like a little more of a beefy toe box. So if you are someone who wants to like hike, do some fast hiking or some trail running and you only want one shoe, like this could actually work for trail running because the upper is flexible enough, you know, like where it's not gonna interfere, even though it is a boot and it'll give you some protection for winter. Um, but with a thicker boot like this, um, it's still fairly flexible, but it'll give you a lot of toe protection. So I don't know if you're working as like a carpenter or um, working with lumber outside, something like that, some kind of utilitarian um, manual labor type work. This is a really good work boot where it's not as clunky as something with a steel toe and like a huge thick sole. Um, but yeah, it's gonna give you some protection. Um, and then in terms of like uh, waterproofing and insulation, like it just, it's gonna depend on your climate, you know? Like the outdoor is actually, this isn't, the outdoor looks like this, but this just happens to have the insulation, this version. This is the Vintero Easy, but yeah, the outdoor looks exactly like this, but without insulation. So yeah, if you're in like a warmer climate, you may not need an insulated boot, you know? So you could get away with something like this um, for the summer that just didn't have the insulation like the outdoor version does. Um, yeah, so another option that's kind of similar to that would be the Zero Denver, another super lightweight boot. Um, this one has canvas on the upper, which is great for those kind of like medium climates where it doesn't get freezing super cold, um, but then you kind of have some hot like days, <laughs> hot months during the summer that you have to get through. So yeah, it's kind of like in the middle, it's got, a, it's got some good breathability. They also have a leather version that's kind of like the Vintero, the Denver leather. 
Um, but yeah, with this boot, it's also got a really durable sole. Um, this one is 6.5 millimeters, so it's a little bit thicker, but super tough. So if you're looking to do something like backpacking or trekking where it's a little bit more than your, your average, um, just kind of like going out in the trails, um, you'd want to start looking at something thicker like this for a sole. And something you'll notice about a, a boot like this is that it's got what I would call a hybrid tread. Um, there we go, there's the focus. Um, so it's got some space in between the treads, so you'll get some grip on um, moisture, like going up and down hills. But then the tread is also kind of flat enough that it'll also work for roads, and it feels really good because you know it's flexible, it's light, and it gives you some durability, so it's not going to fall apart on the roads. Like if you have a, a shoe that looks like this, like a claw, you know, on the bottom that works really well for mud, it's going to get torn up. Um, on you know concrete and asphalt and stuff like that. So this is a really versatile type of boot, um, very light, very flexible, and you can use it on pretty much any kind of terrain. So this is the Zero Denver. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take a little water break, um, and now we're on to the next category, which would be like, if you have a boot that could kind of work for all seasons or maybe the winter, the next thing, the next type of shoe that I would get would be like a lighter summer shoe. Um, this is the Vibram V-Trek, and you'll notice that it is a toe shoe. And if you're new to barefooting, I don't know, you might be horrified because some people don't like the toe shoes. However, let me tell you, when I first started wearing toe shoes, um, my reaction was like that. I was like, ew, get this thing off me. I never want anything between my toes ever again. But I gave it a second chance, and now like, I don't want to wear anything other than toe shoes a lot of the time because... It's just so nice to have your toes be able to spread out like this and just flex individually versus most shoes where, you know, your toes are just kind of like on this um, track together, you know, and they can't do what they're naturally supposed to do, which is flex like individually, right? So they can feel the terrain and they can respond and everything. So this is a great trail running shoe. Um, it's got a four millimeter sole. So again, like super, super flexible. Um, but it's kind of like um, I was talking before with this hybrid tread because there's enough space where you get some grip on wet terrain. Um, and especially when you're, you're flexing like this, you, it kind of opens up even more, which is one thing I love about um, toe shoes. But it's also flat enough where it'll work on roads. So I actually use this, this for road running as well. I can use it on pretty much any terrain. I've used it backpacking. So it's like this thing is just a summer beast. And it's got a merino wool upper, which is extremely breathable. Merino wool is the best material um, for really any, any climate. Um, because it's super breathable, but it's also super warm in the winter. The only thing that this shoe is not good for, and shoe, toe shoes in general, is um, wet. Like wet, slushy, rainy, cold conditions, because it's just going to come straight through the toes, you know, um, unfortunately. So, yeah. Um, if you're in a, in a climate where there's a lot of rain um, and you kind of need something that's not going to get soaked like that, um, a shoe like this is a really good alternative. Um, this is the Belenka Trail Walker. It's also four millimeters thick, so again, like super thin. Um, one of the most flexible shoes I own. Um, but then it has a leather upper. So this is an example of something where it's not completely waterproof, but you can put some waterproofing treatment on it to make the water resistance really high. Um, but because it's thin, it'll work really, really well for summer and maybe even into, you know, like early spring or late fall when it's starting to get cold. Um, but then, you know, you'd have maybe like a second boot for winter where it's getting like below freezing and this, you know, it's just not cutting it, except for maybe trail running. Like if you're trail running, you can get away with something thinner like this if you have a couple layers of um, warm merino wool socks, like in Gingies, which are my favorite. And we'll talk about those a little more a little later. But um, yeah, the Trail Walker, a great extra wide option if you have wider feet, but it works really well for any foot shape because it's a little more snug in the back. And this is true for a lot of barefoot shoes. So even if you have kind of medium width feet like I do, you can totally wear extra wide shoes because it's more snug here. And this really just allows your toes to spread out and they will like over time which is the cool thing about barefoot shoes is that your toes will spread out a little bit if you stop wearing narrow pointy shoes so yeah um trail walker 
this definitely has a more trail oriented tread. So if you're someone who's gonna be mostly on trails and maybe only doing a little bit of roads, this would be a good option for summer. Um, and then the third trail option would be something a little tougher, a shoe kind of like the Vivo Barefoot Primus Firm Ground. And this is still a really light, lightweight shoe, um, but it's got a little bit tougher upper, more reinforced for, you know, like kicking stones and stuff like that. Um, and, and running into roots. Um, this has a breathable mesh upper, which is a great kind of upper for summer because it lets a ton of air in. And if you get the shoes wet, you know, like they'll dry out really quick. Um, yeah, so another really good feature about this type of shoe, a lot of them will have these pull zippers. There we go, there's the focus. And you can whip the shoe on and off really quick with this versus traditional laces. So that's a cool thing to look for. Um, in terms of the sole on this one, it's 6.5 millimeters. So that's a really good thickness when you're going into more things like backpacking, like I was talking about with the Zero Denver or trekking on kind of really tough terrain where the shoe's gonna start to take a beating. Um, another, this is another type of tread. You can see again where it's got some space in there, um, but then also flat enough lugs where it can handle a little bit of roads, you know, it can handle rocks and stuff like that too. So um, yeah, a good all around type of summer trail and maybe some roads sort of shoe. All right, so the third category um, would be road running shoes. Um, road running and kind of like gym shoes, you know, um, stuff that you're not gonna take out in the trails, but you might wear it for doing yoga or weightlifting or just cross training or um, road running, sprinting at the track. And it's one of my all time favorites for that. I mean, actually, like I talked about, the V Trek is probably my all time favorite road running shoe too. You know, like this, this shoe is just so versatile. Um, if it was winterized, it would be definitely the most useful shoe that I own. Um, but unfortunately I can only use it maybe like seven or eight months out of the year. So anyways, for road running shoes, um, this is the Vivo Barefoot Primus Light, and this is the OG. This is one of the first barefoot shoes I ever bought. Um, and you can see like, it's really been, <laughs> it's been really been through some, uh, some hard times, but you know, this thing has like four or 5,000 miles on it by this point. I still go out running it once in a while. It is paper light, like, I don't know how to show you how light this thing is. You know, I can't, I can't translate that through video, but it's like a feather. Um, it's got a medium toe box, which is pretty typical for Vivo Barefoots. Um, they're like either medium or wide. I find a lot of the Primus light um, type shoes are um, like a medium, medium wide. So they get a little bit more pointy up here, but they're fairly wide. They're fairly wide up front. Um, they have a mesh upper, like I said, which is great for summer. Um, they're just super flexible. This um, has a four millimeter sole. Um, so it's just ideal for training, any kind of movement, um, like high intensity type interval training, uh, any of that sort of stuff. And you wouldn't believe it, but this actually can work really well for weightlifting. And I, <laughs> another thing that you're not gonna believe, I used to uh, leg press 500 pounds, like when I was in college and for probably 10 years after that, cause I just got into this like gym bro mode where I was like <laughs> eating two scoops of protein powder every day. But yeah, partway through, I started wearing barefoot shoes and I was leg pressing 500 pounds in these. And you will not believe, like if you're used to wearing cushioned shoes, and weightlifting, you will not believe how stable and amazing these feel compared to cushion shoes, which can like give you plantar fasciitis because your foot's just bending like this, you know? It's not having a stable platform. When you're in barefoot shoes, you're just stable, you know? Like you have such a better sense of the ground, which is good for box jumping and all kinds of stuff. But yeah, a really good shoe for long distance runs, um, ultra lightweight, a, um, really good lockdown here with the laces, which is important because you don't want to be slipping around in the shoes. Um, yeah, so this is the Vivo Barefoot Primus Light. They also make a Primus Light knit version, which if you're doing more like long distance runs or you want something that looks a little more casual, I love knit uppers. Cause they just, you know, they look a little bit more stylish. They're not quite as like sporty as a mesh shoe. Um, so yeah, you can wear this for casual. Um, also really breathable, but it definitely has more flex and room. So this is getting more towards like a wide 
toe box um, type of shape, especially because it just it'll stretch more than mesh will, which is nice. Um, this shoe also has a four millimeter sole, so again, like yeah, crazy, crazy flexible. And one thing I love about Vivo Barefoot as a brand is that they've got this hexagonal tread pattern, which gives you more flexibility, and it's also pretty good for grip, even though this is really minimal. Um, so that's the Vivo Barefoot Primus Knit. Another brand I love for a summer road and workout type of shoe is the Freet Vibe. Um, this is a company that's a little bit more affordable. A lot of their shoes are under $100, which is great. Um, but they're also super high quality and they use recycled ingredients. Like some of their shoes use recycled coffee grounds. Like what? Like how does that even work? I don't know, but it's cool. Um, this shoe, the Freet Vibe, has a all mesh upper, so it's really breathable, like the Primus Light. I find that with um, Freet, one thing that's nice is that they have a little bit more cushioning here. I, I find the heel lock to be just a little bit better than some of the Vivo Barefoot shoes, which can go a little like too minimal, you know? Um, but some people, you know, some people want that feeling. They just want like max, max minimal, as minimal as possible. Um, yeah, so this, this feels a little bit more like a normal shoe just in terms of the comfort, you know, it's softer, um, but it has a four millimeter sole. So it is extremely flexible, just like the Primus Light. Um, but it's a little bit more of a hybrid sole. So this is a road shoe, it's a workout shoe, but you can take this on trails because there's just, you know, you can see there's a little bit more space there compared to a sole like that, you know, on the Primus Light, um, where it's just, yeah, there's not much depth to the tread. So this is a shoe that I'd recommend if you want to do a little bit of trail walking, a little bit of trail running, um, but you also need um, a summer shoe that can work for gym and I don't know, maybe casual. I think it's simple enough to kind of work for a casual shoe too. So uh, yeah, that's the Freet Vibe. Um, another brand that I love is Zero. This is a very similar type of shoe to the Freet Vibe. Um, this is the HFS. And it's the same concept, a lot of um, breathability up here, kind of like a medium wide toe box. The um, free is, is, is medium wide too, maybe a little bit wider. Um, yeah, some good reinforcement here. This is another thing to look for if you're looking for a cross training shoe um, or any kind of like agility shoe, because you want a really good lockdown here uh, with a little bit of side support. Um, if you look at a shoe like the Freet Vibe, it doesn't quite have as much of that, so it's not maybe quite as good for like intense hit type of workouts where you're jumping up boxes and back and forth and up and down and, and stuff like that. Um, but Zero also has like a pretty good amount of cushion, you know, so it's like a really comfortable shoe. It's not super, super heavy. It's not as light as, as something like the Vivo Barefoot Primus Light, but you know, it's like a medium weight shoe. I mean, compared to a normal trainer, it's still feather light, but um, yeah, so one other thing to look for in a cross training or running shoe is like these type of lace locks because it really, it helps you like adjust your fit. Like if you want a little bit looser in the front, um, but a little bit tighter up here or, you know, vice versa, it kind of holds onto the laces so that it's not just one tension everywhere. You know, you can sort of customize it. So that's something I really like. Um, and then uh, on the sole, this one is a five millimeter tread. So a little bit thicker, but actually still really, really flexible. Um, and then the same thing with this type of hybrid tread where you've got a little bit of space here um, for some traction, possibly on some light trails, you know, um, and then kind of reinforced harder rubber here. This is another good thing to look for on a road running shoe or really any barefoot shoe because these are the two places where you're going to coming down. If you're walking in this shoe, you're going to be coming down at a heel here. And then if you're running, this is when you're rolling in, this is the place that's gonna hit and, and uh, have a lot of wear on it. So yeah, it's good to look for these kind of more dense type of uh, rubbers on shoes. And then the final shoe for um, roads or like a summer type gym shoe would be the Belenka Dash. Um, Belenka is a brand that is, has an extra wide toe box, which I love, a ton of room there. Um, this shoe, is yeah it's mesh like all the way around so really good breathability it's one of those shoes that's a slip in so this is a little bit better for like longer runs or just kind of like casual where you want something that's more comfortable that you could just slip on for like doing errands or maybe yoga like this would be a really good yoga shoe 
um, but it just doesn't have the lockdown that you would get on like the Zero HFS, you know? So it just, it just depends on what you're looking for. Like it's definitely more comfortable and easier to put on, but yeah, just not as technical a shoe as some of the other brands. Also has a four millimeter sole, but this is definitely the most flexible um, ground feely uh, running type of road shoe that I have. So I really like it, but a little bit less grip for if you're gonna do any kind of like trail or gravel, you know, it's just definitely like a lighter, softer rubber, which is great for ground feel, but um, is gonna wear out a little bit faster. So just a note in terms of durability, like people think that just because barefoot shoes are thin that they're not gonna last a long time. But like I said, this Primus Light, actually this one is only three millimeters, the new one is four, but this has lasted me for six years now. I have like 4,000 miles or 5,000 miles maybe even on this. I've just completely lost track at this point because it's so good. And you can see that there's some wear on the sole, but overall, I mean, a lot of the sole looks brand new or almost almost brand new. And um, the way that I was able to do that is that I wasn't ever scuffing the shoe or twisting the shoe. And those two things are probably about 90% of the wear on a barefoot shoe. Because if you think about it, when you're going down, um, especially for a road shoe on pavement, if you're coming down smoothly, like you're landing like this and then you're just rolling, like there's very little um, uh, abrasion. You know, like um, the only abrasion comes when you're doing this or you're doing that, you know? So if you can avoid those two things, your barefoot shoes will last for years and years. And um, I don't know, maybe with something like the V-Track, I might be able to go 10 years with this. That would be crazy, right? Um, for a $120 shoe to last you 10 years when most cushion shoes will wear out after, you know, like three months and maybe a year at most is, you know, it's great. I mean, I don't like spending money. I don't think that you like spending money. So that's something that I think is really cool about barefoot shoes. Okay, uh, on to the next section, which is sandals. Um, the first pair of barefoot sandals that I ever got were these Zero Z Trek sandals. And um, they're super lightweight. These ones were five, 5.5 millimeters. I think the new one is, is six millimeters. So it's just tiny bit thinner or a tiny bit thicker. But um, yeah, for a uh, sandal, there are obviously lots of different strap configurations that you can go with. In terms of width, this is like a medium, it's like a medium wide, maybe wide around here, but definitely a little more pointy up towards the toes. It doesn't quite matter as much with sandals because your toes are exposed. You know, there's no like upper preventing them from going anywhere. So yeah, that's something to consider. Um, with sandals, I usually go a half size uh, down just because there's no toe box to run into at the top. And I find if you have sandals that are too long, you end up like, you know, tripping on them. Um, yeah, but going back to the strap configurations, there are different ways to do it. There's this kind of like cross strap thing and then there's like just the, the straight and then there's the Hirachi style where it goes between your toes. So it just matters. It's just a matter of what feels good to you. I still think that I prefer the cross strap, um, especially for walking and hiking. I just think it's a little more comfortable not to have, you know, something in between the toes because you don't really need it, you know? Um, but yeah, again, on the tread, you can see Zero has this type of tread on a lot of their shoes, a sort of hybrid tread that you can wor work for road running um, or trail running, but I don't know, to be honest, I've always preferred shoes for running in general, but some people really like running in sandals. So it's just the kind of thing that you have to experiment with. And a lot of times barefoot sandals are pretty cheap. Um, yeah, I think, what are these up to? Like 60, $70, something like that. But yeah, I mean, they're a lot cheaper than a barefoot shoe. So it's it could be a really good entry point. Like if you live in a hotter climate or you're starting barefooting in the summer, like you could just start out with a sandal, you know? Um, and this thing again is a beast. Like I, they have a 5,000 mile warranty, Zero does on their shoes and sandals. And like, they're not joking. This ha easily has 5,000 miles on it. I've been using it for six years and it's, you know, it's worn down like around here, but the rest of the tread is fine. You know, I'm still getting pr plenty of grip on this. And um, yeah, they're, they're a great sandal, a great bang for your buck. Um, but if you have a little bit wider foot, another brand I love is Monk Sandals. Um, and they have Knight's Leather Upper, which I like for summer because it's a little bit more breathable than rubber. 
Um, however, it does get kind of nasty if you get it wet, you know, like if you take it through a stream or something, that's when a, a rubber sandal might be a little bit better. Um, yeah, but for the monk sandals, wide toe box, they've got this nice strap system here, which doesn't go between your toes and lets your toes really spread out, which I like. Um, they've also got a buckle, which I've seen on very few barefoot sandals, but I just love it. You know, like as a casual sandal or as a trail running or hiking sandal, it's so nice just to be able to like whip it off, you know, and walk around barefoot for a while, um, or just put it on to, to go out and do some errands or whatever, but it's super convenient. Um, this one has a five millimeter sole. So again, like ultra, ultra flexible and the same type of hybrid sole where it gives you some grip, you know, but then you can use this on roads if you want. For whatever reason, I find, I don't know, I just find that sandals kind of like hurt my feet on roads, even a really thin sandal like this sometimes. Um, and, you know, even this, which is worn down to probably about four millimeters. I don't know why it is, but I can run in, in like shoes on the road and it works fine. I can even run barefoot on the road and it works fine, but that's just me. And it's just another thing where you're just gonna have to try and experiment and see what works. Um, but yeah, just something to keep in mind. Um, for a technical type of trail sandal, like the Hirachi style I find can be a little bit better for more security because it keeps your foot from moving back and forth quite as much and also keeps you from sliding forward. Like if you're going up and down hills, you know, um, a sandal like this that's open, I find you, your, <laughs> your feet can kind of start sliding out the front of the sandal. Um, so that's what Hirachis are good for. Um, a little bit faster, you know, if you're doing faster speeds or more challenging terrain. Um, this is the Shama Warriors, if I didn't say that already. Um, but, or the Shama Warrior. Shama Warriors? The Shama Warrior. <laughs> the Shama, <laughs> I can't remember whether it's plural or single. That's okay. Um, but anyways, one thing that I like about these sandals is that you've got the typical back strap, you've got the typical um, front strap and the Hirachi, but then they've also got these optional power straps that you can get. So it wraps over the top of your foot and it holds you from moving forward even more because one problem that you can have with Hirachi is that you kind of get like, eh, you know, it sort of hurts like if you're going down a hill. So this um, extra power strap holds your foot in place. So yeah, a really good technical sandal for going faster. Um, again, same type of, actually the same exact tread that the monk sandals have, that kind of either road or trail type of deal. Um, so these are the Shama Warriors. <laughs> We're just gonna go with Warriors. Um, I think that's what it is. But uh, another option would be the um, Deliberate Life Designs Perception sandal. These are a custom made sandal, which is really cool. Basically how it works is that you send in a tracing of your foot and then the shoe, the sandal gets cut out exactly to what you want, which is awesome. Um, and there are different types of uh, uh, footbeds and um, soles that you can choose from as well. So this is like, if you're a really picky person and you're like, I know exactly what I want, you know, I want like this strap with this footbed and this sole, like this is what you wanna go for, like something custom. Um, a few other things I really like about Deliberate Life Design Sandals, um, they've got this double um, Hirachi strap here, which I think gives a little bit more cushion to the insides of your toes. And then they've got, they have multiple straps that you can choose from, but this is the wider strap, which I really like. It's soft, it's kind of silky, it doesn't rub on your foot and it spreads out the, um, the uh, abrasion a little bit more. So it's not rubbing on your foot as much. Um, yeah, and then pretty simple strap system in the back. It's not, um, quite as secure as like Shama. Um, Shama is definitely the best if you want like a max security type sandal. Um, it's got, I'm forgetting what this is called, the footbed material, but I really like it. It's very natural feeling. It almost looks um, like it is, is like a rubber, but it's got some texture to it. So it, it holds in place really well and it drains water well as well. Um, and then this has the same it, this has a seven millimeter sole because of the extra rubber here, but it has the same type of Vibram, really durable hybrid road um, trail type of sole as the, uh, the monk sandals and the shamas. And then finally, for the last trail sandal or last sandal, sandal in general, this is the Zero Genesis, um, another Hirachi style sandal, but they are really cheap. Um, I don't know, I feel like they're 
what are they now, $60, $70, something like that. Um, but uh, they've got this durable kind of stretchy cord, which actually feels really comfortable. This is the most minimal pair of sandals I own, but it also might be one of the most comfortable because this fabric just like, it doesn't get in the way. It has some nice stretch. Um, it's got a textured footbed, you know, for some grip. Um, and this is like a cord style Hirachi. And I don't know, it's just because it's, it's so stretchy. It feels really comfortable for something you can just kind of like slip in really easily. It's a great trail running sandal, a great hiking sandal. Um, I think for hills, it can feel a little insecure because there's not as much, you know, like as the Shama, you know, so you can slide around a little bit, but for most, most terrain and, you know, most not super steep stuff, uh, yeah, it's great. It's got a five millimeter sole also on it. So again, very flexible. And um, yeah, I just love it. It's it's like an easy thing to pack. You know, you can just roll it up into a tiny hiking pack and take it with you if you need something just to slip on and go through some water or, you know, as a camp sandal, whatever you want to use it for. So yeah, Zero Genesis, really like it. Really good budget, simple option. All right, so yeah. We made it through one, two, three, four, four categories. So we were almost halfway through. Um, yeah, what's next? What do we have next? Ah, yeah, casual shoes. So um, the next, yeah, the next type of shoe <laughs> that I would add would be like a casual shoe. And again, like the order of this, you know, it's gonna be entirely up to you. Like some people might add a winter boot. That might be the first barefoot shoe they get or the, you know, a sandal. It just depends on your climate and what you need. But um, yeah, so this is the Splay Freestyle. This is a casual type shoe. And it's a really good replacement for something like Vans, like a skateboarding shoe. It's not gonna be quite as durable as something of a super thick sole, you know, but um, yeah, you can do all sorts of stuff with this. You can do parkour. It's got a really grippy um, sole. It's got a quite a wide toe box, almost, almost extra wide. Um, but uh, yeah, it's got a really squared off shape, more so than a lot of brands, which I love, because your toe has a lot of space to spread out. It's got a cotton upper. It's really affordable. I think, again, like $60, $70 now. Um, and then the sole, 6.5 millimeters. So like a good thickness where it's got some durability, um, but it still feels really flexible, you know? Um, and then the sole is just so grippy, this material. It's more grippy than pretty much every barefoot shoe I own. So if you work at a job where you have to have a non-slip sole, like again, you know, this might be a good option. They've got lots of different colors and varieties. So yeah, the Splay Freestyle, probably my best um, go-to option for a casual shoe. Um, if you have extra wide feet, the Mookie Shoes Jasper, or really any, any Mookie Shoes, like any of the, the lower cut Mookie Shoes are fantastic. Any of the mid cuts really too. Um, they are extra wide, so a lot, a ton of, of space here. And also if you're someone who has like a high instep, you know, and you need a lot of space here, like. Look at that, a lot, yeah. So this this is one of the shoes that I would classify as being like a high volume shoe. Um, and then, yeah, a, little, a lot of space in the back. If you're someone that has wider ankles, like I have very narrow like chicken ankles <laughs> from being a long distance runner. But yeah, if you need more space in the back of the shoes, Mookie Shoes is a great brand for that. Um, they are also really ethical um, and uh, sustainable with everything they do. This is organic. 100% organic cotton upper. And then they've got a minimal type sole. It's um, 3.5 millimeters. So this is one of the thinnest, most flexible, best ground feel type of sensation shoes that you're going to um, find. Um, so it'll, it'll wear out a little bit faster probably than some other thicker, harder shoes, but still you're probably gonna get about 3000 miles versus maybe 5,000 miles for a thicker shoe. And they are non-slip too. This is another brand where they are, Mukish is pretty tacky. It is gonna hold up on, you know, like working on a restaurant floor, um, et cetera. So those are the Mookie Shoes Jasper. Um, another brand that we haven't talked about yet is Wildling. This is the Flying Fox. I think they've renamed it to something else, which I'm forgetting what they're calling it. But the thing I like about um, Wildling is that all their shoes have a similar type of sole and a similar type of fit and width and everything. So. If you, um, 
Yeah, if you're interested in wilding, but you don't like this particular style, you can basically pick from anything they have and it's gonna work for you. Um, or if you get a wilding shoe and then you wanna get another one, they're like so consistent. They're probably the most consistent barefoot brand in terms of how they fit and feel. They've got a wide toe box, not extra wide, but yeah, definitely solidly wide, pretty squared off with this hoe, which I like. Um, a 3.5 millimeter tread. So very much like Mookie shoes, extremely thin, just a little bit, just a little bit more durable than Mookie shoes, I would say, but Mookie shoes definitely has the best sensation. Um, yeah, fairly minimal tread. So this is a good like road type of shoe. And people, when they think about, or when they're first starting out with barefoot shoes, they think that they need a thick sole, like with a lot of cushion for roads, but actually you want the thinnest sole possible for roads because as long as you're rolling down smoothly like this, there is no pressure anywhere on your foot because it's just equally divided and it's not you're not getting the shock. And the thinner the shoe is, the better your foot is gonna be at coming down smoothly like that, you know, very gently. So like when I was working as a shoe salesman, I started wearing the Primus Light and I had had plantar fasciitis from wearing cushioned shoes. But then when I started wearing this, like within a day or two, my pain was just gone. And I just felt amazing. Like I could just stand all day long on concrete and I was perfectly fine. So that's what I like about thin shoes like this for, um, for casual. One thing I find about um, Wildling is that their winter type styles have this membrane in them and they're definitely not as breathable for um, summer. So if you buy like a winter Wildling shoe, like know that it's not gonna work that well for summer, at least in terms of breathability. So that's what I've found. If you want a summer shoe for Wildling, get one without the, the membrane in there. Um, yeah, for uh, like a more uh, like a dressy professional type um, vibe. I really like the Vivo Barefoot Gobi, which is kind of like a Chelsea, classic Chelsea boot. Very simple leather upper. Um, yeah, this boot is so simple. There's, there's not much to say about it, but just, you know, it looks great. I have a friend that has had um, Gobies for years and he even runs in them, which tells you something about Vivo Barefoot. Like their sole is really good. It looks thin. It's super flexible. This only has a four millimeter sole, but it is tough. And, you know, if you treat it well, it'll last you years. So a barefoot Chelsea boot is a great thing if you want more of a professional vibe for, you know, for work, um, or if you're just a professional kind of person. Um, so yeah, Vivo Barefoot Gobi. And uh, the last casual shoe is the Blanca High Fly. Um, yeah, extra wide toe box, as with all Blanca shoes. Um, probably not quite quite as wide, um, quite, you know, it's definitely extra wide, but I think it has a little more structure to it and structured shoes don't feel quite as wide because they don't stretch, you know what I mean? Um, I don't wear this shoe a ton because I'm not really into sneaker culture, but if you're someone who like likes your Nikes, you know what I mean? And you want something that's like more sustainable and, and like um, hopefully not made with really unethical <laughs> factories, et cetera. Um, this would be a good option to, to kind of move away from that because it's got a thin sole on it that has, you know, really good amount of flexibility, but it definitely feels like a normal casual shoe and it looks like a normal casual shoe. And you can kind of fool people with this, like thinking that it's got your typical, um, like Nike cushion midsole when in fact, all of this is, is just a, a, a bit of rubber wrapping around the side. There's no, the, the sole is actually only like this thin, you know, all of this is just for, just for looks, you know, just to give you a vibe of like a, like a basketball sneaker or whatever. Um, yeah, so the high fly would be a good option for that. It's for a style type of shoe. It's got, um, you know, like your regular type of road shoe. And then I think for people who are transitioning to barefooting, one thing I like about the high fly is that it's got this kind of squishy heel. It just bends a little bit when you walk. And so it just gives you a little more smooth feeling. So um, it, it just helps you transition better. Um, so you're not like, you know, kind of clanking down. You're just getting like a more smooth motion. The shoe's just helping you out a little bit. It's helping you out. Um, yeah, so that's uh, casual shoes. And uh, the next thing I would add is a winter boot, like a serious winter boot. If you are in a cold climate, um, like the Saltage Ventero that we talked about in the beginning will get me through, I don't know, probably 80% of winter, but there are just some days in upstate New York. And if like you're living in Minnesota, 
<laughs> probably not gonna cut it. So you want something serious like the Blanca Winter Boot, and this thing is a winter tank. Um, it's got a full uh, waterproof leather upper all the way around, um, and then on the inside, it's got this really thick merino wool lining, which, like I said before, is the best material for keeping you warm in the winter. Um, it definitely feels, you know, a little bit heavier than a barefoot shoe. Obviously, there's more material, but it's nowhere near as heavy as a uh, regular winter boot. Like, I weighed my old winter boots. They were like 860 grams, and something like this is only around 400 um, or so. And yeah, so they're like half the weight. You're going to be blown away if you've never had a barefoot winter boot before. Um, and like most Blanca shoes, it has a extra wide toe box, which I love. Um, even as someone that doesn't have an extra wide foot, I can just stack multiple layers of socks. Like my favorite socks are in Gingy, the Merino wools, um, because they're just, they're so warm, but they also spread out your toes. And what that does is that it keeps you from getting wet because moisture between your toes is the number one thing that will make you cold because you know your toes get wet and then your feet get wet and then it conducts the cold. Yeah, so I love toe socks for the winter. Most of the time, just one pair of mid weights from Minjinji works fine, but then can also layer like um, a liner over top of it, which works really well because the liner is super stretchy. It's very easy to pull over top. Um, and that, yeah, one other note for winter boots is that there's kind of two ways you can go. Some boots like the Blanca have a built-in um, really warm insole, like this has merino wool insole, so you really don't need anything for that. But if your shoe doesn't have a really warm insole or your winter boot, you can get something like this, just a simple um, like kind of DIY, cut out your own uh, wool felt type of insole. These are really warm. And then um, Vivo Barefoot and Zero and some other companies make this like space blanket type of insole that they put in a lot of their winter boots, which is great because it it's super thin, but it rejects the cold and then it puts it's uh, reflects the heat back up into your foot. So these are great as well. So uh, yeah, back to the Belenka winter boot. Um, in terms of the sole, it has a eight millimeter sole, so like definitely thick and. Uh, uh, grippy. It's got some really aggressive tread there for wet slushy conditions, but also really flexible like for a winter thick winter boot Like look at that. Like have you ever done this with a winter boot before? No, I don't think so. Not with a regular boot um, But yeah, great tread on this and it's also kind of it's you can see that the tread is Angled just a little bit like that. So you can use it on roads um, unlike most shoes that are super aggressive like this and it'll still feel really great like this thing, Even though it's kind of like a heavier, you know barefoot boot with a lot of traction It feels great walking on road. So this definitely for winter is is my go-to for a barefoot shoe Just waterproof super warm. You can work at Arctic client climates and uh, yeah, just a general workhorse for everything um, uh. The uh, next boot, Saucer. This is the Switchback boot. Um, I love this boot because it's uh, fully leather on the upper. It's not 100% waterproof, but the nice thing about having a boot that's just water resistant in the winter is that if you go into a store, like you're doing a lot of errands or you're hiking really fast, it'll help your feet, you know, breathe a lot better versus something that's completely waterproof like this, which can, you know, it can trap moisture. And if you really start <laughs> hiking fast or going to a store or whatever, you know, your feet can get pretty soggy. Um, so I love the upper on this. Softstar has two um, width options, which is great because most barefoot companies only have one or the other, but they have a regular width, um, which is actually a wide width, and then they have a extra wide primal width. Like this isn't even the primal. Um, I don't need the primal because my feet are more medium width, but yeah, for anyone with extra wide feet, the primal is great. Um, and then on the inside, merino wool, but it's not quite as thick um, as the Blanca boot, so it's super warm, but also really breathable, like if you're hiking faster, like I said. Really durable laces, which I like. Um, and then the best sole in the game. This is the Vibram Mega Grip sole, and the reason that I like this sole is that it's um, six millimeters thin, or six millimeters medium thick, or whatever you want to call it, so a good kind of middle of the road tread. Um, on the inside, it's got these triangles, which are really good for wet, slippery conditions, and they have a lot of space between them. And then on the outside, you've got these 
flatter um, type lugs, which are good for roads or rocks or, you know, just kind of preserving the durability of the sole versus something like the Blanco, which only has an aggressive tread all over, you know, so this is going to wear down a little bit faster on roads and rocky type terrain. Um, and then this boot also has like three millimeters of kind of semi squishy type rubber in the middle. So not quite cushion, but just a little bit of kind of jelly squishy feel just to soften like the harder sole. Um, so yeah, it's got a really good balance between being ultra um, flexible and, and durable, but still feeling um, soft. So yeah, Soft Star Switchback, one of my favorite winter boots. Um, and moving on, we've got the Vivo Barefoot Tracker Firm Ground Textile. <laughs> Vivo Barefoot likes to get complicated with their names, but it's because they've got probably the most different variety of, of barefoot shoes in the game. Um, they're constantly like creating variations, you know, like they make a shoe that people like and then they make like a waterproof version and like this is a vegan version So they've got a tracker leather and then this is the textile. So it is waterproof. It's got a fairly wide toe box um, Like some vivos it can get a little pointy just towards the tip. So um, a tip for you if you have wider feet would be to just go up a size um, Especially for a winter boot like this. You're gonna be stacking socks in it anyways um yeah, so for the Tracker Textile, I really like these lace locks here, like we were talking about before, for um, hiking, for you know trail running, stuff like that. It's nice to have the lace locks because you can adjust the tension of the laces. And then like a lot of winter boots, it's got these lace hooks here, so you can pull off the shoe really quickly and then get it on really quickly, which is important in the winter because you don't want to be like struggling with your laces when you, you, know, you get like a stone and then you want to get the stone out and yeah, you don't want to be like struggling with the laces when it's like 10 degrees. Um, so this is like a medium warm boot. Um, it doesn't have like wool insulation. It just has kind of a synthetic squishy breathable insulation. And this can be really versatile for different temperature ranges. Like you could still wear this in the summer. It might get a little hot, you know, cause it's, it's got some thickness on the insulation, but um, in terms of comparing it to something like this with really thick merino wool lining, you cannot wear that <laughs> in the summer cause it'll just be too hot. Um, so yeah, the tracker texts are really versatile for multiple temperature ranges. In terms of the sole, it's got a seven millimeter sole. So a little bit on the thicker side, but still like some good flexibility. And then for the sole, it's got a semi-aggressive tread, which again means it's sort of a hybrid tread. You can use it for firm ground, but it's got enough space in between the lugs here to work on, um, on wet conditions, you know, which is nice. But then because they're flatter, you can also use them on roads and rocks and stuff like that. So a really tough um, boot. And then if you wanna make it a little bit warmer, you can add, you know, a few layers of merino wool socks. So you can kind of customize the warmth, which is a nice thing about synthetic boots versus something with um, more insulation that you can't wear in the summer. <coughs> I don't know if the voice is gonna make it. We're we're struggling, but we're almost we're almost done. We are, um, yeah, we're almost done with uh, seven, the uh, seventh type of uh, footwear. This is the Zero Alpine. Um, this is definitely like the thickest, beefiest type of shoe, type of barefoot boot that I own. Um, it is completely waterproof and it's got a synthetic vegan upper, um, which is always nice to have. Um, and then on the inside, it's got a synthetic um, insulation. So, you know, it's medium warm, again, like the textile, uh, and you can layer socks, you know, and there's just a ton of room in this boot. Like you can just see if you're someone with a high volume, high volume foot, like there is a ton of, you know, or a high arch, there's just a ton of room there. Uh, medium wide toe box in the front gets a little bit more pointy towards the tip. So again, like, um, yeah, you might want to go up a half a size for uh, a wider foot or if you just want to stack a lot of socks in it. Um, one thing that's kind of unique about this boot is that it has a lot of structure, you know, so if you want to um, put this boot into a snowshoe that has like the rubber straps, they're not going to crush you know, the boot, like it's got some resistance. So if you try to snowshoe in a thinner um, boot, like this one, for example, which only has a four millimeter sole, like the tension is gonna go like that and it's gonna feel really uncomfortable. And then also there's nothing underneath you 
um, other than a, like a little bit of uh, fabric or something for a snowshoe. So your foot's gonna like collapse into it and you're gonna get plantar fasci fasciitis and it's gonna be a bad time, you know? So like a, th a slightly thicker, um, more structured boot like this is great for snowshoeing. It's also great for ice. Like if you're walking on really unstable ice, you don't want um, a thin boot like this because your foot's just gonna be like all over the place and you know, trying to find stable ground and it's just, yeah, not ideal. It's one place where you really don't want a thin barefoot shoe is on like crunchy ice because it's just annoying um, and possibly painful. Yeah, so this, um, the Alpine has an, a uh, nine millimeter sole, so like fairly beefy. And then it's got a aggressive tread here. So really good for slippery, icy conditions. But again, like some reinforcement here where you're gonna wear and then on the heel thicker here. Um, so yeah, you can wear this boot on roads. It's not too bad. It definitely feels, um, yeah, it definitely feels heavier, but still half the weight of a normal snow boot. Um, so you can use it for some walking, especially if there's snow cover on the ground, on the pavement in the winter. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's pretty much all I have to say. Oh yeah, just for the flexibility. It does have a lot of flex like this way for a thick, for vertically for a thick boot. And then, you know, not as much, like it's pretty stiff horizontally. Um, but you know, some decent vertical or uh, diagonal flexibility. So that's the Zero Alpine. And uh, yeah, we are, we are on to the next category, which is kind of like, like a casual winter boot. Like those are more like your sort of trail, like super heavy, heavy duty winter boot that has a lot of traction. But um, this is the, the Vivo Barefoot Gobi winterized. And the thing that I really like this boot for is just like going on casual walks in the winter, like running errands, um, snuggling, shoveling snow where I don't need something with a ton of traction. I just want something comfortable. This thing is just like a moccasin. It is so comfortable. And it's actually one of the only Vivos that I would say is approaching extra wide. Um, just because the upper is so flexible and you have so much extra room there. And it just, it feels like putting a slipper on. I, it's really funny because I usually hate winter because like being skinny, you know, it's just hard. I get cold, I get, I get freaking cold. But this, this winter, like I'm actually sad that it hasn't been more cold or nasty yet because I, I, I just want to wear this boot. And most of the time it's too cold because um, it has a synthetic lining, but it is very, very puffy. Um, so it's great for breathability and actually a really warm boot for walking around. Um, one area where I find these thinner type of casual boots not so great for is if you're just standing or sitting somewhere because they have such a thin sole. Like this has a three millimeter sole and you know, it feels just like being barefoot, which I love. But I went to a soccer game and I was sitting there on the metal bleachers and it was like raining and like 35 degrees and yeah, just didn't cut it on the sole. Um, I think if I had put some more insulation, like if I had put like Vivo's thermal insole plus like a wool insole on top of it, that might've done it. And I might've been able to do that in this boot because it's got quite a amount of room, you know, up top. Um, so yeah, in terms of the sole, these types of casual winter boots just have a normal sole. So they work fine for, you know, flat terrain, for snow, even, you know, for a little bit of ice. Um, and they'll provide some decent traction on, on roads or even light trails, but definitely for hills, you want something like this because this is gonna slip all over the place on wet hills. Dry hills, yeah, it would be totally fine um, even in the winter, but yeah, wet hills, not gonna cut it. And again, you know, like this kind of uh, lace hook feature, which I really love, which makes it super easy to take the boot on and off. But yeah, a lot of these lightweight casual boots, just like, this design, I just freaking love it. I It just makes me happy putting this boot on because it's so comfortable and it's so stylish. And um, yeah, it's one of my favorites of all time just in terms of the feel of it. Um, a very similar type of boot is the Ahenza Jaya. Um, Ahenza is a completely vegan company. So if that's really important to you, you don't wanna use animal products. Um, it looks almost exactly like leather, but it is not leather, it's a vegan leather. Um, and Ahinza has a fairly wide toe box, not extra wide, but definitely um, solidly wide. And one of the things I love about this boot compared to any other barefoot boot that I own is it's more like a combat height. You know, I have always wanted a barefoot combat boot and this is the only boot that I've found so far that looks like that, the Jaya. 
Um, it is extremely lightweight. Like it's even lighter than the Gobi. Um, it's, uh, it, they say that it's waterproof and it is, it is waterproof, um, up into the point where you have been wearing it in wet conditions for like three or four days in a row. And then it starts to soak through, but overall I would say waterproofing is pretty good with this boot. Um, it's also insulated, so it's fairly warm. I've been down to like 10 degrees with this boot. And as long as I have, you know, a thermal type insole in there and like a couple layers of Injinji Reno wool socks. Um, yeah, it stays warm. In terms of the sole, it's like a three to four millimeter sole, so extremely flexible um, in all directions. And it's got a semi-aggressive um, tread, so it's a, a decent amount of traction, but also really good for roads. I mean, this this thing and um, the Vivo Barefoot Gobi just, yeah, they feel amazing for walking on pavement because they're so smooth. You know, it's just like walking barefoot, but with um, a little bit of protection and definitely a lot of warmth. So that's the Hansa Jaya. If you want more of a utility boot, like, you know, we've got some firmness to it. This is the Vivo Barefoot um, Scott. And uh, yeah, it's it's got a full leather upper, um, definitely a little bit thicker than the Gobi is. Um, so if you're doing work outside like uh, construction or um, woodworking, I don't know, any type of, of manual labor type job and you don't need a full utility boot, but you just want something that's gonna protect a little bit from like dropping a board on your foot or something, um, the Scott is a great option for that. It's a little bit tougher of a boot. Um, it's got this really nice line that runs down there that holds the laces. So again, it's another kind of thing where you can just adjust the tension a little bit more. And like a lot of <laughs> winter boots, like if you take them off, the laces will just fall out of the eyelets and so annoying because then you have to put it back in every time. So this is a nice feature because it just holds the laces in place and prevents them from coming out. Um, and the inside of this boot, the top, um, and they're made in Portugal. So like this is like the top of the line in terms of barefoot quality um, for winter boots. But at the top, they have like a smooth leather. So it's really easy to slide your foot into. Um, but then if you go deeper into the boot, let's open it up a little more. You can see there's um, organic cotton lining there. So again, like a medium, medium warm boot, not quite as warm as um, merino wool, but you can, you know, get away with more temperature range with this because it's not quite as warm. Um, and, you know, going into stores, it's a little bit nicer. It's not completely waterproof. So again, there's like the pros and cons of that. You know, it's like, do you want more breathability or do you want waterproofing? So it's just something you have to decide on. Um, I find because this has more structure than something like the Gobi, which is um, very squishy, the Gobi winterized, it keeps the elements off of your feet a little bit better. So if it's like raining or slushy, this boot is a little bit better. It has a four millimeter sole. So yeah, very similar to the, the Gobi winterized, extremely flexible um, in all directions. And then it has Vivo's typical like hexagonal type tread, which, you know, is good for roads and gives you a little bit of traction, but you wouldn't wear this um, for going up and down slushy hills because it just doesn't have enough tread. Um, but yeah, one last thing, just freaking the design of this boot. I just love it. It's just so simple. It looks classic, classic leather boot. Um, but then just a few modern touches, just the kind of, you know, the curve here, just make it feel a little more modern and the, the kind of the hexagonal thing going on here, pattern. Yeah, I just love this boot. One of my favorite boot designs of all time. And uh, yeah, the last casual winter boot would be the Magical Alaskan. And one thing I love about this, uh, is that it has a zip, you know? So it's a really convenient boot for doing, um, uh, just going inside of the, out of the house, going to get the mail, going to do errands, stuff like that. Um, you can get it on and off in like two seconds, but it still has that classic like boot sneaker type of look with the laces. Um, Magical has a pretty wide toe box. I think they get a little bit more narrow towards the tip of the shoe. So it's another one where if you're worried about having wider feet, you might want to order a size up just to give yourself a little bit more space because it is quite wide here and it is quite stretchy. It's got a full leather upper, um, not waterproof, but you know, water resistant for a little bit of tiny bit of slush, a little bit of wet grass, that type of thing. But yeah, if it's really wet, it's going to come in through there. So that's something to keep in mind. But it's um, on the inside, it has 
very puffy wool insulation. This boot, even though it's ultra light, it's super warm, super duper warm, um, which I love. Um, very flexible. Another one where it's a uh, four millimeter sole and it's great for roads, but then, you know, it, it's got some decent grip when you open up, when you're flexing your foot like that. Um, a little bit more oriented towards roads just cause it's, it's more flat. So yeah, again, like I wouldn't take this up and down slushy hills cause I think that you're just not gonna have enough traction, but a really good winter lightweight casual type of boot. Oh my God, <laughs> so many barefoot shoes. I'm almost out of water. So yeah, we, we better make this quick. All right, um, slippers. So two of my favorite slippers, number one would be the Noble Souls boot. It's not technically, it's like a slipper boot. It's like a moccasin slipper boot. It's, it's one of those boots that can do a lot of different things, but um, it's custom made. You can get it on Etsy. There are a lot of different places on Etsy and um, other brands that you can get custom made barefoot shoes. Um, but you basically like the um, DLD perception. You can just, you know, send in a tracing of your foot and then you get a custom barefoot shoe that fits you perfectly. And this is definitely the best barefoot experience of any boot that you're gonna find. Just a simple leather moccasin, probably about two millimeters thin. So it's extremely thin, almost nothing there. But if you put a wool type insole in there, I have, again, worn these down to like 10 degrees. Um, if it's wet, you know, it's not the boot for that um, because you've got the stitching here where the water is gonna come in. But yeah, it's like a moccasin slash like boot that you can wear outdoors. I wear it inside when it's really cold in the winter because I have, um, my house is uh, really cold on the floors. It's like an old house that's not super insulated from the basement. So my feet get freezing in the middle of winter. Um, so I wear this all the time, but it's really roomy, really comfortable, really flexible. Um, yeah, just conforms to the shape of your foot over time. Very warm, but also breathable. And you can wear it outside, which is great. You know, it can be, it, this is a really versatile type of boot. It's not gonna hold up to like gravel and stuff over time. Cause you know, it's just gonna tear into the sole, but any kind of soft trail or even pavement. Yeah, it's, it's it, you know, it's all right. It's all right in pavement, but it doesn't have very much tread. So again, like you're not gonna be doing hills in this boot. Um, and then the other type of barefoot slipper I really like is the um, KOA, or uh, KOA, not the campground, the King, KOW, Kingdom of Wool um, slipper. And this is a very simple barefoot slipper, good wide toe box, um, and then a leather sole, you know? So it's got some warmth on the bottom, um, but it's also got a little bit of grip to it. Um, it's not super slippery. And I just, my typical like loadout, <laughs> if we're gonna call it that, is like a pair of Njinji socks and then the um, Kingdom of Wow. What did I call it? Did I call it Kingdom of Wool? <laughs> yeah, I have a, um, I have a mattress that's, that's called Home of Wool, so I'm getting them confused, but it's the Kingdom of Wow slipper. Um, and uh, yeah, so I like doing this with slippers because then, first of all, the, the um, separate toes spread out your toes so you get more breathability. And then second of all, um, so you know, so you don't get that kind of like wet, um, kind of moist, slipper feeling. I don't like that. You know, I don't like that. I know, I know you don't like that. Um, but then second of all, you don't have to wash it, you know, which with like a wool yarny type of, um, uh, slipper, you don't want to put it, you know, through the wash too many times. If you can help it, a sock is going to stand up better to that. So yeah, kingdom of wow slippers. I really like, um, and then, yeah, number nine type of shoe. It's not really a shoe, but just socks. I mean, we've talked about this, but these Njinji socks are like 87% merino wool and they're um, made to a really high ethical standard, which is important when you're using animal products because a lot of wool products um, use some really horrible um, practices um, on the animals like mulesing. You don't even want to know what it is. Don't even look it up, but trust me, like just do not buy like merino wool products that don't specifically say mulesing was not used. And you like always wanna use the most ethical type of products that you can when it comes to animal products. But I have just not been able to find anything that's warmer and more breathable than merino wool. So that's why I wear them. They just, they work. Um, if you take care of them, they can last for quite a while, um, probably about you know two years if you're not beating them up too much. 
Um, and yeah, these are the mid-weights. Like I said, they have a liner sock as well, which I really like. Um, and some shorter socks for running as well. And um, yeah, in terms of socks, there are also a couple of brands um, called um, Free Your Feet and Skinners, which are sort of like a sock shoe type of thing. And some people like them. I don't because they're made out of synthetic materials, unfortunately. So my feet like get disgustingly sweaty in like any kind of synthetic sock. So those are not for me, but you could check them out if you wanted to. Um, and then number 10 is not really a shoe either, but it's, uh, it's just barefoot, you know? Um, I spend so much time barefoot in the summer and the great thing about being barefoot, obviously other than the sensation and letting your toes spread out and earthing and all of that is that you save money, you know, like, especially when it's warm in the summer, if you can build up a little bit of callus so that you can go, um, hiking or trail running or even road running. Like if you watch my full barefoot video, I have, you know, been road running completely barefoot for a long time and it just helps you save money on shoes because you're not using the barefoot shoes as much. And, um, yeah, I mean, barefoot should probably be number one on this list, but I don't want to confuse people, you know, by putting something that's not a shoe at the beginning of a shoe list. But, um, yeah, barefooting will always be number one in my heart. And I hope that it'll always be number one in your heart. <laughs> so yeah, that is my list. We went through a ton of barefoot shoes. Um, thank you for still being here. If you watch the whole video, feel free to skip around and all that. Um, I'm going to put uh, chapter sections down below and also down below will be links to everything that I talked about plus like lists from my barefootwear.org site and um, a link to the search tool where you can just like filter um, shoes which is really cool so you can be like okay I'm looking for a shoe that is waterproof and can be used for trail running so and it's you know sold in England or something like that you know so you can do these filters and it's really cool and can help you find shoes um, more easily so yeah thank you for being here and I'll catch you next time peace